But the thing you need to realize is that those people are sincerely seeking God. Those people are, with their whole heart, wanting something to be done about their sins. Those people are, are with all that they know, worshiping the God they don't know, by and large. I'm not saying all Roman Catholics are lost. But I'm saying anybody that believes the heart and soul of Romanism is lost. Because the heart and soul of Romanism is anti-Christian. As you'll see as we look in the Scriptures. Continuing... This blasphemous gospel necessarily alienates evangelicals because it contradicts the specific teaching of Scripture. Now, I want you to open where I'm open to in the Bible, to Hebrews. Perhaps the most crucial book to understanding, and I think tonight some of you might understand a little bit more about your salvation. You might have come to Christ simply by faith, which is how all of us have to come to Christ. You might have just been aware that you were a sinner and there's no doubt about it. You might have been aware that God is holy and there's no doubt about that. And you might have been aware that there's nothing you do to save yourself, so you just said, God, forgive me, save me for Jesus' sake. One of the greatest joys in my life has been to bow with people. Remember, the only thing you can take with you to heaven are people. It's been one of the great joys of my life to bow, to get on my knees, to bow my head, to open my Bible with people seeking Christ and to pray with them. And you have the same privilege to do that. I hope it's one of your desires to do that. And to see them come to know Christ. But you know, we don't cover the book of Hebrews usually. There's a lot in this Bible that you don't have to know about that you can be saved. But the truth of the gospel is that if you are born again, and if the Holy Spirit of God that wrote this book has come into your life, that when you come face to face to a scripture that you didn't know was in there, and even if you don't like it, You'll obey it. Hebrews, and I'll start in chapter 9, starting in verse 25. And I'll read several passages, but starting there. Nor was it that he should offer himself often. Did you know that among the Roman Catholic churches that circle this globe, that the Mass is celebrated over 200,000 times a day. Do you know what that means? That means 200,000 times a day, Jesus Christ is crucified again. That Jesus Christ again suffers, and as I'll share with you a little later, and Mary suffers with him, because he cannot sufficiently get you to heaven. Mary has to plead, because only she has the ear of the Father. The son doesn't, which is hard for me to even say. But 200,000 times a day, Jesus Christ is nailed again to the cross. And he again suffers in a bloodless way. Do you know why? Because they don't realize that Hebrews 9.25 says, Nor was it that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters into the holy place year by year with the blood not of his own. The whole Roman Catholic priesthood is predicated and based on the Old Testament sacrificial system where those people could never be atoned for their sins. No blood of any goat in the Old Testament covered anyone's sins. It just temporarily was a portrait of the ultimate sacrifice to come. Nobody got to heaven because they offered a sheep in the Old Testament, and no one will get to heaven because some priest elevates a pancake for them in the New Testament time now. The only way I and you will ever get to the presence of God is because Jesus Christ once and for all offered himself without spot to God. He poured out his life, bearing in his body our sins once and for all on the cross. And he bled his real blood, and his life was given up, not taken from him. He laid it down for you and for me. And it says in verse 26, Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once, at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And the same argument that the writer of Hebrews offered to those Jews who were so religious and who were so caught up with dutifully bringing their little lamb to this priest and having the priest slit his throat, catch the blood, slay the, or cut up the lamb, put it on the altar, dump the 
blood out and burn up the lamb is the same argument you need to bring to the very same bound in unbelief people that believe in the efficacy of the Mass, Roman Catholics. Because they have the same basic blindness that the Jews did and still have. Both groups persist in their unbelief. And that is they don't realize the fact that Jesus Christ coming to this earth was the consummation of the ages. It was the, the zenith of history. Why? Because he was the lamb, as we'll see in Hebrew or in Revelation 13, a few weeks from now, slain before the foundations of the world. This was not an accident. This was not a cosmic blunder that, that Satan came and deceived the woman and she brought her husband into the transgression and thus death passed to all mankind. God knew it was going to happen. And in his righteousness, in his omniscience, in his sovereignty, in his absolute justice, Jesus Christ was slain before the foundation of the world in the mind of God. But in the consummation of the ages, in time, he was crucified on the cross. That's a mystery. And I bet some of you who have been in the Lord a long time can't figure that out. I can't. But the Bible says, you either believe Jesus has to be sacrificed over and over again, or you believe he was sacrificed once. If you believe it's over and over again, you didn't get the message and you don't have salvation. If you believe it's once, you got the message and you're saved. You know what the Bible teaches? Jesus Christ was only offered once. Look at verse 27. And inasmuch as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after that comes the judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, shall appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await for him. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't eagerly await for someone that's going to put me in fire. I wouldn't eagerly await for someone that says, my sacrifice is not enough, you've got to go burn for a while. That's the Christ of Romanism. That's the Christ who is unable to save to the uttermost those that come unto God by him. So he has to have his mother help. And he's got to have you help too. Do you see why, as politely and as un Critically, as is possible to say, I'm saying that the basic heartbeat of Romanism is anti-Christian. Because Christianity is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is God the Son. And God the Son, when he paid the price for our sin, paid it all. That's why I don't have any trouble saying I'm a Protestant. Now, there's most Baptists that are real hardcore Baptists say, we're not Protestants, we are around before the Reformation. I'm not going to quibble about that. But I am going to say I protest with all my being the anti-Christian blasphemous connotation that Jesus Christ was not sufficient in his once and for all sacrifice on the cross to bear away the sin of the world. The scriptures tell us that Jesus Christ's sacrifice is sufficient. Lest you think it's only in one chapter and verse. Look at chapter 7, verse 27, another critical verse that you need to know about. I'll back up to verse 25 because um, it's, it's kind of hard to leave anything out. Verse 16 is one of my favorite verses. I mean, if you haven't got that one underlined, you ought to. 716 says, we live not after the, the futility or, or on the basis of physical things, but according to the power of an indestructible or endless life. When you go out of here tonight, you're living in an indestructible mode. You are going to live forever. You will never be separated from God if you know Jesus Christ. You will never suffer for your sins. Jesus suffered for them all. You never have to worry about waking up in purgatory someday. You can know that you can eagerly await the one that died for you. This is why, verse 25. Hence also he, that's Jesus Christ, is able to save forever. Now there goes Arminianism. <laughs> We're going to step on everybody's toes tonight. You can't lose your salvation. How can you lose what God gives you? Do you think he's so foolish to put something in your hand you're going to drop? God said he is able to save forever. I'm sorry that, that Mr. Arminius didn't find this verse. It's a lot more complicated than that. I am being silly there. But uh, to save forever those who draw near to God through him. Now, I tell you what, if you come through 
the saints, you're not coming to Christ. If you come through the Blessed Holy Mother Virgin, you're not coming through Jesus Christ. It says, He is able to save forever those who draw near to God through Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. The only way you're going to get to heaven is to have Jesus Christ plugged in on the other end, making intercession to the Father for you. Because every time the accuser, until chapter 12 of Revelation, when he's thrown down out of heaven, and that hasn't happened yet, every time he comes and looks at God with his infernal evil eye and says, look at John Barnett who sinned again. You can't let him into heaven. He's mine. Jesus Christ, verse 25, is able to save forever those who have drawn near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. You know how I'm going to get to heaven? Not because I'm never going to sin again, but because Jesus Christ is going to intercede for me to the very end. I don't need extreme unction. I don't need to say the rosary enough times that Mary will make sure that I get the final, ultimate, last-ditch offering for sin to hope I'll make it through the sacraments. I know right now that I have eternal life. Do you? I mean, is that your blessed hope? If you're trusting in anything other than Jesus Christ who once and for all died for you, you can't have a blessed hope. Well, look at chapter 9 and verse 12. Because I want you to understand, it's all the way through this book, but I'm spotting you through it so you can underline them and write them down. But 9.12 says, And not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place. What? Wow. Let's say it all together. Once for all. Wow. How many times is Christ sacrificed? How many times does the Roman church say he has to be sacrificed? 200,000 times a day. And that's not even enough to get everybody any further than purgatory, which is just an abbreviated form of hell. Now, which Jesus Christ do you believe the Bible presents? The one that has to keep trying and hasn't quite made it? Or the one that once and for all entered the holy place, having obtained not temporal remission, that's a, that's a term the Roman church uses. But look what it says in verse 12. Eternal redemption. 